sometimes and look for yourself. Um, All right, just bring it up so, Stellarium here. So for people who are new here um, and Jody and Isaac, we have something called Messier Minutes. We just started and we look at the, there's a list of deep sky objects um, called the, uh, it's Messier, this guy Messier came up with them and we are going through them all. There's 110. We go through like five each week that are up in the sky and give tips and tricks on how to view them and how they can, and hopefully complete the certificate we give people with a pin that says, yes, I've seen all these and I have viewed them through my own telescope. So Chris has pulled up Stellarium here and we only have five this week and I'll let him take it away. <laughs> Yeah, so this week we have the moon dominating the nighttime sky. So we thought we'd save the Messier objects that are moon tolerant. So we've got some um, star clusters that are not too, uh, not too hard to see even when the moon is around. Towards the later part of the week, the moon will be uh, moving out of view. So um, if you can wait a couple of days to, to tackle these, you'll have a bit of better luck at it. And so what, what we've got here are um, some five open clusters, one of which almost everybody has seen. And we talked about it today. That's the Pleiades. Um, some people, some people know it as a hole in the sky. Uh, you know, I, I understand that the, uh, the South Sea Islanders, a lot of cultures around the world, all have recognized this um, fairly bright open star cluster. And so if you've seen the Pleiades, you've already got at least one of your Messier targets um, nailed down. That's Messier number 45 in that list. And that's up there near the V of Taurus. So it's high around 7 p.m. tonight. It'll be high in the little bit west of the southern southern horizon. The next and ones I've got this here are these. Naked eye target? This Sorry. one's naked eye. Yep. Um, especially when the moon's not too bright. And it's great at binoculars and you don't want to magnify it too much in a telescope because if you zoom in too much in the telescope, you'll, you know, it'll be too big for your field of view. So Low power or binoculars, that's a great one to go. All right, our next ones are, we've got here Messier 35. So Messier 35 is down here. It's another open star cluster, and it's near the toes of Gemini. And I, I feel badly now showing the Western constellations <laughs> after our talk today, but um, I'll give people context to where they can find in the in terms of the, the known constellations. So Messier 35 is tucked up here just above these two medium bright stars that form the, the feet of Gemini, so Propus and Tejat. And this one is, here you go. So you want to, um, um, you can use binoculars on this one as well if the moon's not too bright. It's a fairly big cluster. What I'll do is I'll bring up the picture of an uh, eyepiece view here. Let's see. Let me just crank this up a little bit. Here we go. And just as Chris is going through this, I know it was a little fast, but we really wanted to hear Jody and I take more time to Jody and Isaac speaking. I sent a link. We have a list as well as star charts, uh, star finder charts for um, all these uh, targets we're talking about on our website for you to yeah. find after. So part of the process when you're looking at these objects is to notice things about them. You know, are they symmetrical? Are they unusually shaped? Do they remind you of a of an animal or a creature or something like that, you'll find different things will, will sort of tweak your, you know, your, your thoughts when you look at them. Um, there's another little cluster off to the side of this one as well. So be, bear that in mind. So that's, that's sometimes known as the shoe buckle cluster, Messier 35. And then we've got a trio all in a row in here in the ring of Auriga. So look for the really bright star Capella, which is nearly overhead. So there's the zenith. So it's nearly overhead in the evening sky. Um, Messe 38 is kind of easy to find because it's kind of just a little bit to the right of the, se of the center of the ring. So if you just sort of put your binoculars in this half of the ring of Auriga, you can pick up that cluster. And all three of these, 38, 36, and 37, are um, visible in binoculars when it's not too moony out. So this one's sometimes called the starfish cluster. So M38, um, you want to look for, you know, how many stars do you see? Do you see any patterns? You know, the stars are arranged in different, um, different sets. And then below that, so panning downwards, we've got Messier 36. And an easy way to find this one is to make a triangle using the two stars 
in the ring. So we've got this circle of stars, Mahasim and El Nath. And M36 is like an isosceles triangle just above and between the two stars. So M36 is, um, you know, it's, it's got a nickname of the starfish cluster. I've seen some other ideas for the creature that it might represent. So take a look at that. And also while you're looking, notice, do all the stars look the same or do you see any differences? So we want to make note of that kind of thing. And then Messier 37 here. And this one's cool. It's the same sort of trick. You take the mess, uh, Mahasim and Eldath, and now you're making that triangle below outside the ring instead of inside the ring. And so you can pick up Messier 37. So this is um, the brightest of the three. And when you're looking at this one, you want to look for the pepper. So it's, it's, its uh, nickname is the salt and pepper cluster. And you can notice that some of the stars might resemble salt and some might resemble pepper. So have a look at that and see if you can pick that out. So those are your, those are your um, suggestions for this week during the time when the moon is around, but, but just gradually waning. And um, next time up, we'll have the last of the winter constellations because we'll be meeting again around new moon when there's no moon in the sky. So we'll have a nice dark night to get some of the others left over. So I'll, I'll stop there and take any questions there are, or we can let folks go. Well, you know, Chris, um, I, I think that what a, um, if you let us know next, when we're not, when we're here next, what yeah. some of your your um, objects are that you're going to look at, maybe let us know, and then we can talk about those during the time. Because like even Orion, I yeah. could spend a whole good day talking about um, our version of that I know. constellation, right? So um, maybe we could do that. The other thing that I'd really like that we really think would be neat is if you could run through a couple of the names for the bright planets, which are all hanging out in the morning sky nowadays. Mm. So, so that that's on the to-do list too. Sure. There you go, Isaac. Yeah. I'll send those to you. So you have some advanced notice. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody. Well, that's, that's so great. We've had a good time this afternoon. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bring and not last time you'll see them. So don't worry if you, we didn't answer your questions. We can we'll chat more next time. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye bye.